Okay, so yeah, just sort of give your name and your deployment. Sure, so I'm Morgan Ames. I've worked uh, the most with the uh, Paraguayan deployment in Paraguay Educa. Um, I've also visited Peru and Uruguay and have some familiarity with Birmingham um, and some of the smaller deployments around, but Paraguay is definitely my focus. And then what specific type of things were you doing with that? Uh, um, I was uh, basically a volunteer social scientist down there, so I have um, my, my undergrads in computer science, actually, but since then I have had uh, been focusing on various social science methods, anthropology, sociology, and um, and they were very interested in having somebody down and you know kind of following up in more detail with with some of the kids down there, looking at what the overall impacts, educational impacts, and social impacts are. So that's been been my focus. What were some of the more interesting things you learned? Um in terms of that? Um, so I think, well, one, th one really nice thing about Paraguay, um, especially when I was there, is that they had a lot of social support. So they had uh, teacher trainers in every school. Uh, they had a technical support team. They had a phenomenal uh, development team, technical development team. And, um, and I think they enjoyed a lot of success based on all of these resources. Um, and so probably one of my biggest lessons is just that uh, these projects really do need a lot of resources. Um, and I think it's something that anyone who's been working with deployments knows, but if you if you aren't, it's very easy to, to kind of fall into the idea that like, oh, well, you know, we can just put the laptops down and be fairly resource thin and, and maybe it'll all work out. Um, and my visit to Peru in particular showed that the sorts of programs that are very thin on resources other than the laptops, the laptops often end up locked up in cabinets or in stacks in the back of classrooms. So it's really those ongoing resources that make a big difference. Um, a sad thing that I learned somewhat recently is that some of the resources they're not able to pay for anymore. And so longevity with these projects is always a challenge, I think, making sure you can, uh, you know, you can provide these sorts of resources, not over two years or four years, but 10 years or 20 years. Um, and that's something I think that all NGOs end up struggling a lot with. Um, especially smaller ones like like the one in Paraguay that's in charge of the deployment there, um, but uh, but yeah, I think that's definitely one of the big takeaways. Yeah. And what first got you started in this world? Oh gosh, um, I had a friend who almost joined One Laptop Per Child back in 2007. So this was not, in fact, it might have even been 2006. This was not long after the project was announced. Um, and he, he and I, he was a graduate student in computer science when I was an undergraduate and I got to know him at Berkeley. And um, he was very passionate and idealistic. He ended up not being able to go. I think they couldn't work out visa issues or there was something because he's not a U.S. citizen. But, um, but his interest got me interested and so I started following the project. I started kind of researching the history yeah, of it because it's, it's not just a um, you know, five year or ten year history. It's, it's a 40 plus year history if you go back with all of Seymour Papert's writings and everything. So, um, so I started tracing that through and then I thought, well, what's actually happening on the ground? Um, so then I was able to connect up with Paraguay and visit there and visit some of the other deployments and um, yeah, just continued from there. So it's been quite a while. It's been like six years now, I think wow. I've been following it. But, uh, um, and it ended up being my, my dissertation subject and um, and I'll be continuing it a bit, and I'll be going back in November to Paraguay to help them do some follow-up research. What was the moment or experience that made you go, oh, okay, I'm about to devote the next six years of my life to this? Or? Oh, gosh. I don't know if it was really one moment. Um, certainly these talks I had with my friend who really wanted to join the project had a big impact on me. Um, as I read up on the program, especially from kind of a social science perspective and kind of, you know, putting all of these ideas in a larger context of what other sorts of educational reforms have been going on, um, what's the larger, the, uh, the larger landscape of, um, of NGO work. Um, I mean, I think just layer upon layer, it was just a more and more interesting story. And so it just kind of, it was more of a gradual process, but it just kept, it just kept gnawing on me. <laughs> I wanted to be able to to look into all of these questions and answer them. What were the mo what was like the most difficult things about this oh, experiences gosh. or things or things? Um, 
So I think, I mean, being a social scientist gives me a somewhat different perspective because some of the struggles that deployments had, um, you know, are, are difficult for me to deal with, but they're also very interesting from a social science perspective. It's like, how do people deal with, with breakdown or with conflict or all of these sorts of things? And, you know, those are difficult moments in a project, but, um, but they're also very interesting moments because they tell you a lot about what you know, what the community holds most valuable. Those are the times when all of those values are put to the test. Um, in Paraguay, I think when I was there, the project was actually doing quite well. Um, but there was still worry that they would be running out of money soon and that they would need to hand over a lot of the, the uh, support that the NGO had been providing to maybe the local government or the schools or community volunteers. And that whole process of looking and, and trying to see who to hand off to, I think is something that many deployments struggle with. Um, so that was definitely a difficult part for them. Um, and again, it was, it was interesting for me, but of course I want to help them as well. So, so it was also difficult for me to, to see and to try to figure out if there was something I could do to help. Um, I think watching from afar the, uh, the 2008 announcement that Negroponte made that they work with Microsoft and then seeing all the people leave the project, lots of you know, people who have been devoted for years at that point leave the project was something difficult to watch. Um, but again, a kind of interesting moment because it was a moment where people could really define like, well, this was my original motivation and this no longer fits where the project is going. Um, so I think those are two moments that you know, are interesting, but also very difficult. Cool. And then what are some of the challenges bringing, preserving a culture while you're bringing, you know, sort of technology and culture from the outside in? This is something that uh, certainly um, my training in anthropology has, has given me an interesting perspective on because um, in my observations, it seemed like the problem wasn't so much that our culture would somehow overrun their culture. Um, in a way, almost the problem was more that their culture trumped our culture, or in fact, in a way, not even their culture, but but a culture that the that various sorry little hiccups um, various large media companies had been trying to inculcate um, could get another foothold in. So that's one thing I worry about going forward with the project. Will this just be a platform for commercialism? Um, and I really hope not, because I feel like. There are a lot of downsides to that kind of culture. Um, we see it all the time around us in the States. And uh, even in the public schools in the United States, there's a, there's a lot of commercialism. There's a lot of advertising. There's a lot of all these things. Um, so I think, and that's a hard one to say how to get, a, get away from, because you know there are, all of these companies are willing to give a lot of money to be able to put advertising in front of all these kids. Um, other ways of preserving culture, I mean, getting folks, getting local folks involved is certainly always very good. Um, but in a lot of ways, they, they may struggle just as much as we do with, you know, how do we, what should we do to go forward? How do we define this? How do we support this long term? Um, and so really just seeing it rather than an us and them kind of thing, our culture and their culture, just see it as like we have this, this bricolage culture that's all mixed together. We all have different stakes in it, perhaps, and we have different resources we can bring to it, but, um, but where can we find common ground? And what sorts of goals do we all have? Um, and what sorts of things can we all maybe push it back against a little bit? And I think the commercialism is one thing that I would, I would certainly be happy to push back against. <laughs> cool.